So let's do now an um, example a bit more advanced than just the low pass filter. And um, so our our example shall be a band stop filter now. So we will see that this is going to be a bit more trickier in terms of integration and calculation. And um, the, the motivation is um, 50 Hz removal. So 50 Hz is just the main frequency in Europe or in uh, many other parts of the world. Sometimes it's, 50, it's 60 Hz. So 50 Hz is the main interference. which can, uh, can stray into all different kinds of signals. And um, again, here we use, we use an ECG with um, 50 Hertz. And um, we would like to, to remove that. Okay, so let's have a look at the, at the example ECG. I've already prepared this here. So that's the that's the, our Python environment. And here here on the on the left I've got here this program which just plotting our signal. That's the ECG two milliseconds dot DAT. So it's just in our example file to to um, analyze here. So that this file here ECG two milliseconds and um, so if I so if I run that and um, and I pull this window here here in, and then we see our ECG here. Um, so these are the, the R peaks here. But if we if we zoom in into that, so if I if I just have a look here between two heartbeats, so we see here that there is a substantial amount of um, of 50 hertz in it. Let's see if I zoom in a bit more. Yeah, so we see here, here these oscillations. These are these are our 50 hertz oscillations. And um, so we, we would like to get rid of these oscillations. And so, so how do we how do we do that? Um, so of course, what we need to do is if we're just getting rid of of our of our windows here again. So we need to create a impulse response. So that's what what this always all about. You know, so we just need to need to create an impulse response for our 50 hertz notch filter. Impulse. So what's the impulse response for our 50 hertz notch filter. So we now, so we do it exactly the same way now I've done before the low pass filter, but now it's it's just a bit a bit more involved because um, our integration becomes a bit more complicated. So we have our um, frequency response, that's omega here, and that's um, H2 Ej omega. And, um, and so now we have we have here our frequencies omega 1 and omega 2, where we have our, our notch here. So that's our, our notch here, and then this running is running up to pi. So remember, we also need to have the mirror to have a um, real valued response. And so we have this running to, to minus pi. So that's again here 1 and 1. And so what we need to do is, so we just need to simply do, do now the inverse, inverse Fourier transform on this here, and then we're getting our impulse response. Yeah, so that's our that's our de our desired desired frequency response. Yeah, 
And what we want to have is we would like to have the, the impulse response. So we're doing a inverse Fourier transform. Inverse Fourier transform. So inverse Fourier transform h of n is 1 over 2 pi. And then um, maybe integration from minus pi to, um, to plus pi from here to here. And then we've got our e2 h2 e2 j omega. And remember, this is just just 0 or 1. And then um, the integration here e2 omega n d omega. And so, and so that one we just need to need to calculate here. So we know that, so this this h here, this is isa isa zero or one. So what we see here, so from here to here, it's one. So that's here. If we just add this here, so that's minus omega one, and that's minus omega two. So it's from from here to here, it's um, it's one. Then from here to here, 0, 1, and then 0 again, and 1 again. So we just need to split this up into, into three parts. So let's do that. Um, so just here on the, on the side, let me just as a, as a small, small memo here, so that we have so that's our response. So this goes from minus pi pi to plus pi. So that's h to e j omega, and um, so that's omega here. So and here that's omega one, and that's omega two, and that's here. It was a bit nicer, minus omega 1, and that's here, minus omega 2. So we just need to need to integrate this here. So we need to integrate the sections which are which are 1 for h2 ej omega yeah, so so when this is one and so that's that's easy to to split up and so so we just write h of n and then one divided by by 2 pi and so now so first integration is from here to here and so we have minus pi up to minus omega 2 and then e2 j omega n d omega so that's our first integration remember this is just one then we've got the midpoint here minus omega 1 to plus omega 1 so minus omega 1 to plus omega 1 e2 j omega n d omega and then and the last bit is from here to here, so that's um, integration from from omega two to to pi, and then again e two j omega n d omega. So and um, so now we just need to need to solve these integrals here, and that's obviously a trivial matter. Because um, integrating exponential is not a not a big deal, and so so again we have here. So now, if we're integrating this here, we just need to need to be careful need to be careful with the, with the chain rule here. So this J n here will just show up in front of it. And then this integrates here, so integrate, um, so just the boundaries to, to show the 
the values I need to sub um, substitute here that uh, that I write it like like um, that. Let's write this here e two j omega n. It's a bit a bit tiny, but um, hopefully that's all, that's visible. So then then we do then we do the same here here again from of um, j n and then and then e two j omega n and then and then this this one goes here from minus omega one to plus omega one and then then the last thing is here then this here e to j omega n divided by j n and then this is running running from omega two to pi so we see here we can um this um j j n here we can just pull that pull that out out of this um, equation and then just write it write it down a bit further expanded so so that one here goes this um goes and goes to the two pi and then j n and so now we need to be careful with our with our boundaries here so so this runs here up to omega minus minus omega two so we need to substitute this one in here so e two j omega two n and uh, be careful with the sign here so that's a that's a negative here and then uh, we need to subtract the um the the minus the minus pi pi of that so minus and then e2 minus j pi n so that's basically now that here which is spread out spread out here if i just draw it like that okay so so that's that's sorted um and then and then the next the next step here is is now we need to take care of this one here so so we have first the first the upper boundary so the positive one here so that's um plus and then and then e2 j omega 1 n and then and then we are um subtracting subtracting from from this here this one here so that's um e2 j omega 1 n but the negative one and then the last the last bit here so that's here basically that let's um draw it like this and then the then the then the last then the last part here is is now um this this one here so so e two j pi n so this comes comes from here and then we are subtracting from from this here e two j omega two omega two n so that's um nearly ran out of out of space here so we see here the bracket underneath this this clip here so it's been been quite a quite involved formula here so this one then then goes goes and goes to here this here e to j pi omega n if we if we're looking here at the at the same same thing here then we see that there's a matching matching pair here and then the um, omega 2 finds a finds a matching matching element here and then this one finds a find some matching element here so why i've drawn that with the following substitution we can 
write this in different ways. So 2j sine t equals 2 e2 j t minus e2 minus j t. And so, and so we see that um, that we have here a matching a matching sign. Yeah, so so these these two match for the sign. Then um, we've we've got the same the same thing here. Yeah, so this this gives us again a sign. And um, so if we're looking looking here at this one here, then this gives us again again a sign here. In this case here, a negative sign. So we can just just basically um, replace these exponentials now now with our with our sine function. Okay, which this was uh, a bit compressed at the bottom there, but the um, general idea became clear, I, I think. So let's just write our end result what we have identified from the difference of exponentials up here. So that was sine of omega 2n and then plus, plus sine of pi n and a big bracket around this here. So that one is always, um, is always zero. So we can omit this and so then our result is and that's a um, typical result for an analytical solution which is um, essentially a low pass response subtracting um, a high pass response and um, with that we are getting this this result so the question is now um, so what do we do for for h h of zero because that gives us obviously division division by zero but luckily this division by zero is not so not so dramatic because because um, which which is which is actually a division by zero divided by zero and this could be could be could be anything so that's um, so we just need to need to sort this out and um, for for this for this purpose we use the um, rule by L'Hopital. so that's um, are we just getting slowly towards zero here? And by by doing this by looking at the derivative. So we just need to have a look at the at the derivatives and with that we are also getting then the result for H of zero. So what are what are the other derivatives? So the derivative of um, of the n of n, remember this is not not one over n but the function n. So g here g of x is n. So then the derivative is just one. And so and so then the and the sine turns into a into a cosine. Also not not very difficult and um, because of the chain rule we are getting a omega one there so that's that's our chain rule and then then the same happens on also on the other side cosine of omega two n and then omega two and um and so now, now what's important is here. Here, um, if we're looking at this, at the sign here, so we cannot sweep this under the carpet here because this actually gives us gives us a um, a result. And so the so the sign here becomes becomes um, a cosine of pi pi n, and then multiplied multiplied by pi. 
And so that's and that's a um, that's an easy to make mistake that we first sweep this under the carpet, and then we um, don't take this this um, cosine into into account here. So that um, that that cosine comes comes from here. Okay, so now we can just um, simplify this. So remember the n the n is zero and the cosine here then just um, gives us a one. And so this gives us a omega omega one. And then here this gives us just a omega two, and then then this gives us here a pi. So then if you want to if you want to just um, change this makes this this a bit a bit nicer. We can also write this here as one minus omega two minus omega one divided by, by pi. So what are what are the cutoff frequencies? So remember we need to need to set our omega one and um, Omega two, yeah. So, so we need to need to define what they are. So, if we have something like that here, it was that was our response, and that was omega one, and that's omega two, and this goes up to pi. So, this was was our frequency response. So omega, and they're just um, defined as as usual. So omega one is um, is, ob is obviously omega one is um, two pi f one, and um, so that's omega one, and then f one is a is a normalized frequency. And then the same the same also applies for omega two is then two pi f two. So our normalized frequencies here are then um, so f one. Let's say let's say this is here in um, in 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 real terms that we say we start at forty five hertz that we would like to remove something, and we need to divide this by our by our sampling rate. F S sampling rate, and then the and the F two, let's say, we say we set this to fifty five hertz, and we also divide divide this by our sampling rate. Yeah, so that's also our our sampling rate. So here, for our data file F S is is 500 hertz sampling rate and so so we need to we need to calculate these factors here and then with that we are able to to calculate our omega 1 and um, omega 2 and um, with that with that then we can design design our filter let's just recap here that we have this h of n is um, 1 over pi n sine of omega 1 n minus sine of omega 2 n and so so we just need to need to create a a vector here or an array array which um, represents our different different values values for this for this sign here and, and um, and the n is running in samples, so array let's say for example for example from minus 200 up to 200 So and for that for that purpose, there um, we can just just use the um, 
numpy numpy a range command numpy a range and um, generate this so let's do that here n equals numpy a range from minus 200 to 200 and remember the um, endpoints never included so therefore I just write it like that yeah and so we see here um, this creates us an array, array for minus 200 to plus, to, to plus 200 so let's just um, save it here in our in our script and so and so then the then the only thing what we need to do is now we need to create our our impulse response remember impulse response is that and um and so we just need to need to type that in here let me just move this window make it a bit smaller so that we can can see that and um so our our h is now is here um one one divided by by n multiplied by numpy pi close and then and then we have here numpy sine of um, and now and now we've got our our omega omega one so remember the the omega one is is defined as as our our start frequency 45 hertz divided by by five five hundred multiplied multiplied by two multiplied by 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 pi and then multiplied by n and so and then and then the same then then the same we have we have for the for the other frequency that we have and that we're subtracting here 55 55 from it and um, creating creating our our vector with that so if i've not messed up anything then this um, should work yeah so now we see that um that that um, python python is complaining about this here that we created a division by zero yeah so um Wrong brackets. So therefore, if we if we having a look here, then this should be our our element where we got gets a division by zero. Yeah. So that's none. So we need to fix that. So h of two hundred, um, and that's our our formula we got we got via via L'Hopital. So that's now omega omega two omega two is this one here. And then and then we're subtracting from this omega omega one. So that's so that should us um, and then we need to need to need to divide this here by 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 pi for our for our case here. Okay, so quite quite okay. So if we if we now have a have a look at the function yeah, so that that looks looks pretty much like a like a band stop function here. So now we would like to filter the ECG with our impulse response. So in other words, we need to have an um, FIR filter, and the um, and the Python so the Python command for this for this is called um, L filter. It's part of the signal processing library. And um, and that's called L L filter. 
and then we write h one comma comma y and so and then so that's the that's the impulse response. This is here for for IIR coefficients. This is what we're discussing. Discussing um, this is what we we are discussing later, and so so we don't don't need to need to deal with this just now, and that's our our input input signal here, and then this is here our our output. And so if we now write y two equals to signal dot l filter and then it's offering already um, the coefficients here so h comma one comma and then our our signal here was was in in y remember here that's on this side here still sitting there so that hasn't complained or so and so if we do now pl dot plot y2 and have a look if this shows up okay so now we see a classical fir filter response to a take so it's take, taking a while to go through the filter so we need to need to zoom in here a bit yeah and so we so we see now here that this ecg is um, nice and clean compared to the to the original signal so this is the signal y here it's just um Create a second a second figure, and um, and plot plot the original signal. So remember, this was our our original signal here. And um, so if I'm if I'm zooming in a similar region here, so we see here these are the 50 hertz, and the 50 hertz now is gone, and the signal is now now nice and nice and clean.